With a population of over 200 million, Nigeria is the most populous black country on earth. We are diverse, strong, vibrant and mostly young. We are yet to reach the land of our dreams. We can write, tell and be our own story. From the economy, education, security to politics, you name it. We can build the Nigeria of our dreams if we work together. Join us on The Run-Up to discuss and proffer solutions to the issues confronting our polity every weekday. I am Bayo. I am Uche. And I am Nyamgul. We invite you to The Run-Up, 11 a.m. Monday to Friday on this channel. You're welcome back. It's still the run-up, and uh, we just talked to the managing director of Daura Dry Port, uh, Mr. Ahmed Rabiu. Right now, we're being joined by Mr. Obaro, who is an oil and gas expert, and he'll be talking to us about why Nupeng is threatening to go on strike and the issues that are involved. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Okay, um, Nupeng, a very critical uh, group uh, in our economy, is threatening to go on strike. Can we know more about the reason why they intend to do this? I want to quickly correct that. It's not Nupeng that is threatening to go on strike, but the Independent uh, Petroleum Marketers Association. That is Ipman. That wants to... Yes, Ipman. And as we speak now, the Independent Petroleum Marketers a forum which is in the north they are already on strike which is for three days warning strike because of a uh, payment uh, that is a uh, what the responsibility of the now defunct uh, uh, petroleum equalization trust fund was always a uh, undertake which is a logistic cost they asking for it according to them they've not been paid the, the last payment they received was in uh, november december 2021 that up till now they haven't received any further payment, but the Nigerian mainstream regulatory authority says that they've paid till uh, August. So at this point, we don't know who to pay them. So those are the issues. Then for the world threatening in the eastern part of the country now, they're talking about uh, extortion, basically too much uh, uh, the money, the levies, fine, uh, uh, the levies from the association, which is Nupeng. But at the same time, they just put a bulk figure, which is a 120,000 naira by truck. And you know, these uh, fees come per liter, per liter. In most cases, it's actually two naira per liter. You understand? Mm -hmm. it, it is actually two naira per liter. So I don't know if the 100, and I mean, uh, the 60,000 capacity trucks or the 33,000 capacity trucks or the 45,000 capacity trucks at the same a uh, flat rate of 120,000 that i cannot say for certainty so these levies that are being that are being imposed on the people are from where is it not from the right authorities and even if it's from the right authorities why is it so much of a problem if you are a member of a union you are entitled to pay levies and they know that these levies are charged by the union they belong to. Okay. And I want to say, because for them, they said that in the Eastern Park petrol will be selling for uh, between 200 and above. Please, it's on record that from February this year, petrol has been selling above 200 naira per litre in most Eastern part and Central part of this country. And it's also on record that in March this year, I was in Bayesa, and the governor of Bayesa pleaded with the marketers not to sell above 200 naira per liter petrol. You understand? So for them, they just, I, I believe that they want to buy public sentiment and emotion, to whip up public emotion against their organization. I don't know the issues they have with them, but I don't think that is solely responsible for them to increase a PMS prices in uh, the eastern part of the country. You, if you just take a survey, I can assure you, the cheapest we get PMS in the eastern part is around 119 naira per liter before now. Hmm. 
Okay, so you're saying it's just public sentiments that is making them to say they want to go on strike and whatever is happening is supposed to happen. Is that, can we quote you as saying that? I cannot say that what is happening is supposed to happen because what is actually happening after the signing of the PIA is illegality. On whose okay? part? Everywhere, across the board, is illegality. Because if the PIA has come into effect, then there should not be regulated price anymore. Okay. So we should get that clear. The PIA has come into effect. There shouldn't be regulated price anymore. But since there is a regulated price, it is it, it is contrary to the PIA. I I that don't I don't then, I, I don't seem to understand. You're saying the levies that are being imposed on these people is from the association they belong to, not necessarily government. Now the government brought the PIA. It has been signed into law. Where is the illegality coming from? From the associations or from the government? Or where? I, I don't seem to understand. We seem to have lost that call. We will try to reconnect with uh, Mr. Obaro and uh, get more information from him. We were talking about the, uh, the strike that has been threatened. I said Nupeng. He's saying not only Nupeng. There is Ip Man inside there. There's Nupeng. So we just have a general picture that it is the oil and gas sector that a lot of things are not happening the way they should happen. According to him, PIA has been signed and so many things that are happening now should not be happening. We're trying to establish where the fault is from and what we need to do or what the relevant agencies need to do. We'll take a short break and try to re-establish contact and get back with you. Stay with us. We're glad to know you're still there and watching the run-up on uh, Plus TV Africa. And uh, we're glad to also tell you that we've been able to re-establish contact with Mr. Ogadi. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Ogadi. We were wondering what happened. But before that break, um, you were trying to tell us where these illegalities, as you called them, were really coming from. And maybe also tell us what needs to be done at this critical moment. Because we cannot face another strike from the oil and gas sector when we've just gone through the one in our educational sector. Here in Lagos, we're already facing a one-week warning strike from bus drivers and other stakeholders. And it's becoming more and more difficult. So where, like you were trying to tell us, is the illegality coming from? Uh, let me say this when you say that uh, when i say that the marketers really want a public uh, sympathy is this on the issue of the levy which is 120,000 petrol without telling us expressly if it is the 33,000 liter capacity 45,000 liter capacity or 60,000 liter capacity these are the trucks capacity that we have they just gave a blanket statement that it is 120,000 per truck. Who are they? Because they it, just it, gave. Who are this they? The association or the government? Yes, Nupeg. Nupeg. Okay. Nupeg. Who is Nupeg? They are Nupen. members of Nupeg themselves. Okay. They themselves, they are members of Nupeg downstream because petroleum marketing is actually downstream in the petroleum industry. Hmm. They are members of Nupeg. So it is their own association. In their own association, we did themselves, they are members, and they decide to take this decision and fix this pricing is overcharging them. That is an internal issue for them to deal with, not for the government. Hmm. I want that to be clear. Yeah. Then on the issue of payment, which is the bridging cost, basically for logistics, for uniformity of price across the country. That is the reason why, because it's a, it's, a, it's a regulated market, and government gives price bank, which is lower limit and upper limit, that you should not exceed this price, because it's regulated. You are paid for. Government takes the under recoveries. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So if government hasn't paid them this money, then it's a fault of the government. On, on the government part, that is on one hand. But on another hand, I am saying that for them to say that the cost of PMS will be about 200 dollars per litre. And, and since February this year, I can tell you the average cost of PMS in the South East and the South South 
how it's been between 200 and 1, the lowest you will get is around 189. Do you understand? Mm. So I don't really, I don't know, I don't, I don't really know if you get it, what I'm no, uh, but, trying to stress but, you. But okay, just let me not say I understand all the time. Uh, but if you're saying in the East, the fuel has been, they've been selling fuel for over 200. And now the body is saying that the fuel will be sold at 200 Naira. Is that not an improvement? Just so I understand. They themselves. If man, the independent petroleum marketer, cannot be absorbed of complicity of the pricing and corruption in the oil sector, in, in the dancing sector. I want to also get that clear. And why do I say this? Is this they themselves? Okay, who is monitoring them? I can tell you if you go to the southeast and the south south, as we speak today, hardly you will find a filling station that will dispense one liter of fuel for you. One liter and it is one liter. No. They adjust their meters in a way that they rip the people off and nobody is checkmated. They're not saying anything about all these ones. Mm. You understand? So their internal issue should not be a burden on Nigerians. That is what I am against. Because NUPEG is their own association. It's not government controlled. Okay. Do you understand? Okay, so, let's 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 just digress a bit. Well, this is not a digression. We you mentioned the PIA and you said there are some things because the PIA has been passed into law should not be happening. Can you tell us what the provisions of this PIA are that have not been followed to the letter and how they should be followed so that we shouldn't be having this kind of problems in the oil and gas sector? Section 240 of the PIA deals with this uh, issue. It clearly states that after the PIA has been signed into law, six months is the window given. Then after six months, then the petroleum uh, downstream sector is fully deregulated. And when it is fully deregulated, then it means that there will not be uniformity of price again. Every marketer should sell at how much he buys. And I want to clear this. In the entire Southeast, the NMPC depot are not functional. Okay? So when they get the PMS from independent depot, it will be a bit higher than the NMPC depot. That is one fact. Then two, because of these independent depot, who are those who own these independent depot? They are still members of IPA. You understand? They want to make profit as well. They will do everything to ensure that their patronage will continue. Do, do you understand? Even if it means that the NNPC own will not work. Do, do you get that? I want to, I want also get that clear. Then again, coming to the PIA. The PIA itself, when there is no price uniformity, but it also states another thing. It gives importation of uh, petroleum products to only three um, uh, three individual parts. Number one, Dangote. Number two, BUA. Number three, MNPC Limited. These are the only bodies empowered to import PMS into the country. Do you know why? Because it states that any uh, entity that does not have local refining capacity. I'm not talking of modular refineries, so please. Local refining capacity cannot import a refined petroleum product into the country. I know if man, aside these uh, three bodies that I mentioned, has a local refining capacity. Hmm. So they themselves, they cannot import the product into this country. They will only buy from the one that NNPC import or these other two uh, individuals import into this country. So we must get that clear as well. Let, let me understand. We, on, on, we are about to wrap up. Let me just understand. You're talking about uh, import um, refining capacity for these three people or three entities that you have mentioned, the NNPC, the Dangote, and the BUA. The refining capacity that they have, what does it translate to? Because I don't see, uh, I don't seem to understand what they mean by refining capacity when not, nothing is being refined in Nigeria. Just put me through 
Uh, let me they understand. They have licenses that. now. They have what? They have licenses. They have licenses that they, they are not license. using. They are not refining anything. So what makes them different yes, from the people who are I'm not, not refining? I'm not the one who dropped the bill, but please note it clearly that even if Ma themselves they fought against this provision of the PIA, they themselves they are against it because they want to import by themselves. Do you understand? That is on one hand. But the provision clearly states that those who have a local refining licenses are only those empowered by provision of the PIA to import PMS and other petroleum products into Nigeria. Okay. Do you get that clear, please? I see now what you mean. Anyway, yes. um, so before because of this now, yeah. Just, just the majority of Ipman, they cannot import by themselves except the NNPC or any of these individuals or entities give them the the, the contract to import on their behalf. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, if you were to advise the government now, you had the opportunity just briefly. Uh, what would you say? Because our economy, our entire economy, I would say, hangs on oil and gas. And when we, we keep having problems like this, whether it is from infighting, whether it's from inside saboteurs, whether it's from whatever place is coming from, the individuals, the citizens are the ones who suffer. So if we were to advise the government or whoever is relevant to that uh, sector, what would you say? Briefly, please. We have been advising the government, but the government never listens. Full and total deregulation. No two way about it. Anybody giving you price bonds, oh, it's going to be 200, it's going to be 400, it's just wasting his time. Two, the government should let his hand off refining. Three, Open up the entire petroleum industry and let Nigerians who are interested come with their money and fund their operation. Four, the kind of support the federal government of Nigeria has given to the Dangote refineries should also be extended to other Nigerians who are interested in the downstream sector of the petroleum uh, industry. Or even the midstream, which is gas, or the upstream, which is exp um, exploration and production. Without this, government, okay, where is the NNPC now? Where? Where? Can you tell me where you can find NNPC? Before now, it has never been like this before. Before now, the NNPC remains to the Federation account. But I can tell you. I can tell you, NNPC is okay. declaring profit, but they have not re re remitted one kubo, one kubo to the Federation account in the last eight months or even more. Okay. Okay, Mr. Ogadi, uh, there's a lot more to talk about, but this is where we'll have to wrap it up for today. would like to thank you for <laughs> giving us uh, another perspective to what is happening in the oil and gas sector. Thank you so much for being a part of the run-up today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Obaro Ogadi, an industry expert there, telling us uh, some of the things that are happening in that sector. We will take a break and take the news. After that, we will conclude with our third and final guest. Stay with us. With a population of over 200 million, Nigeria is the most populous black country on earth. We are diverse, strong, vibrant and mostly young, we are yet to reach the land of our dreams. We can write, tell and be our own story. From the economy, education, security to politics, you name it. We can build the Nigeria of our dreams if we work together. Join us on The Run-Up to discuss and proffer solutions to the issues confronting our polity every weekday. I am Bayo. I am Uche. And I am Nyamgul. We invite you to The Run-Up, 11 a.m. Monday to Friday on this channel.